The idea that the United States has two separate criminal justice systems is certainly not a new one on many of us watching this show right now, but nothing shows the glaring disparities in so-called crime and punishment, quite like the federal sentences for drug crimes in particular. Crack cocaine, which used to have a 100 to 1 sentencing ratio uh, compared to powder cocaine, meaning you'd get the same punishment for one gram of crack as you would for 100 grams of cocaine. You can imagine who that impacted. President Obama did reduce the ratio to 18 to 1 in 2010, but that's not enough. There's a lot more that needs to be done. So now Democrats are pushing for a new bill called the Equal Act to finally make the penalties equal more than 40 years after this failed war on drugs, which, let's be honest, was a war on black and brown folks in this country. Joining me now to help break it down is Kevin Ring. He's president of FAM, an organization that promotes fair and effective criminal justice policies. Kevin, thanks so much for being here. I'm very familiar with this Reagan era policy. Um, without question, it devastated a generation of people, mostly black and brown people, with things like mandatory minimums. Um, but many poor white folks, too. Why has it taken so long to undo? Well, I think that, you know, our country is slowly getting to the realization that our drug problem is not a criminal justice problem, it's a public health problem. And part of that was when you saw the opioid crisis that started affecting yes. white communities and people realized that, you know, locking everybody up and throwing away the key is not going to fix this problem. But this crack problem has persisted for 36 years. And even though this is not a drug that people are worried about today, we have fentanyl, we have synthetic, um, you know, methamphetamine. We're still punishing black people disproportionately harsher for no good reason, separating families in the same way we've been doing it for 36 years. And Congress has just got to finally step up and fix this. You know, I think something um, that you bring up, media narratives helped do this at the time. I remember the whole narrative about crack babies. I remember the D.A.R.E. campaigns. Um, I remember the yellow journalism, the sensationalism um, of what crack, and it's like black people were painted as the face of crack addiction. They were menacing, you know, uh, out to do bad things in society. And the war, uh, the war on drugs, the budget tripled, and it was used to build things like prisons and more police. Police. Then when white people and the opioid crisis came along, the budgets used things like let's rehab facilities and people were interested in how they felt and what led to this. I've never seen somebody go into a crack house and say, let's all sit around and talk about how we feel and let's make sure you're healthy and, and bring you, you know, meals. The, the right. stark uh, disparity here is outrageous. It's outrageous. So what can what 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 can be done about this for the folks watching who are frustrated, who have maybe even been impacted by these policies? For those of us who might feel powerless as we watch Congress do nothing, what can we do to make Congress act? Well, listen, I just want to say Congress has a lot of issues on its plate, right? There's serious problems. There's inflation. There's gun violence. There's voting rights. There's police reform. All these things that we want them to get done. And the truth is that there's a division in the country. We're divided and there's not consensus on these issues. And Congress has failed over and over to address these issues. But on this one, despite all the bad things we just talked about, there is broad consensus to fix this. The Equal Act passed the House with 361 votes, including Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan, right? It has law enforcement support. It has civil rights group support. Um, it has 11 Republican co-sponsors in the Senate. It has supermajority support. There's no reason this can't get done. And if we fail, we're going to have families separated for decades longer for no reason. So people have to weigh in with their senators immediately before time runs out. Yeah. And, you know, when everybody was giving themselves a big pat on the back about the First Step Act, which was very important um, legislation led by uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries uh, out of New York, um, it's called the First Step First Step Act because a second step needs to happen and a third step. And a lot of these policies uh, reside at the local level. Um, so this is a, you know, entire uh, uplifting and reimagining of, of the criminal justice system that we have to do. So thank you, uh, Kevin Ring, because you reached out to us and, and, and put this on our radar. So I really appreciate the work that you're doing here and making time this Saturday morning. Thank you for bringing Thanks attention for to